Hi guys, I've just started my second week of classes here in Japan and this video will probably be really long because so much has happened and I have a lot to tell you. So I arrived here on September 11th and it is now the 29th. So I've been here like two and a half weeks. I don't know, I'm not doing math right now. Um, I've been here for a little while. The first few days I was here was just free time, getting settled in. I'm, I was supposed to have a roommate, but my roommate didn't show up until just a couple days ago, actually. So I spent a lot of my time waiting for my roommate to show up. My roommate is from Korea, and I'm not gonna lie, I was really anxious because I had two Korean roommates when I was in Washington, and the one who shared a room with me just had a really bad personality, and I just had a really negative experience, so I was a little nervous, but as soon as I met her, I was so happy. I was so afraid we were going to have opposite personalities, but she loves cute things just like me, and she's so adorable and nice. I really love the dorm that we're living in. It is so much better than the student housing I lived in in Washington and I don't have to pay a dollar fifty to use the washing machine here. All the utilities are included. I get my own room. It comes with a desk. It comes with a bed. Almost all the furniture and the appliances are supplied. Downside is no oven. Only one burner, which really sucks if you have two people cooking, but since there's only two people living here and we eat at different times, it's fine. The biggest problem the international students had upon arrival was the fact that there's no internet in the dormitory, there's no internet on campus, there's no internet in the school library, there's no Wi-Fi anywhere. For being such a technologically advanced country, you would think that Japan would just have Wi-Fi everywhere, right? That's not the case. It is so, so difficult to find free Wi-Fi in Japan. Sometimes you'll find hotspots, but you have to pay for them to use them for a certain amount of hours, or you have to buy monthly passes. There is free Wi-Fi at some convenience stores and also at some train stations, but there's a time limit and you can only use half an hour, an hour a day. So that was really unfortunate because it's very difficult to buy Wi-Fi in Japan, like a little pocket Wi-Fi, without a two-year contract. Since most of us are only here for five months, if we wanted to cancel, we'd have to pay like $200 in cancellation fees. A couple of the other students are renting Wi-Fi for 60 something dollars a month. I got lucky and my roommate offered to give me the password for her Wi-Fi. The classes I'm taking now, the schedule is really weird for me because I'm used to, you know, taking just a few classes and having them every day. Here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight classes and they're all only once a week. On Monday, they have general manga theory, and they told us that all of our classes would be taught in English, but the general manga theory class, first of all, I really don't like manga, and I'm really trying my hardest to get out of this class. It was a required class because it was taught in English, but it's actually not taught in English. The teacher had one of the students translating everything, and I felt really bad for her. My problem is that the teacher is really famous, he's a manga artist. I could care less about manga and I cannot draw in manga style. I have tried. I really don't like how manga looks. And if I'm not passionate about something, I'm obviously not going to be very good at it. Some of our assignments are to make up a story and illustrate it. And all the other students are like, oh, I, I draw manga for years, I'm in manga club. I'm just the odd one out in this class. And I talked to the lady in charge of the classes last week. She told me that it was required. I talked to some other people and they said maybe I can get out of it. So I'm talking to the lady again tomorrow. I do not want to take this class. I cannot draw. And I am almost positive that I will fail this class because I will spend all my free time trying to draw semi-decent manga. The second class we have on Mondays is reading Japanese literature. The teacher is American and she, I love the work she assigned us. The story she assigned us for week one is the human chair. And we have an entrepreneurship class that's taught by a Canadian teacher who's lived here for quite some time. 
we actually get to make something in class and advertise it, take surveys, figure out our demographic, and like make our product and sell it and donate the money to charity. On Tuesdays, we have an internship class that kind of goes over the details of this internship that we're gonna be doing while we're here. But it's only me and the other American student. So it's a little bit casual and the teacher is very, very nice. What our internship is, is just to go to classes and help with like the English language classes. And we have to do like 10 hours a week. So we'll drop into different classes, different events, just to help out with things and get our internship hours up. On Wednesdays, we have an English education class, and it's not really an ESL class, it's what I thought it was going to be. It's actually a class just teaching about English education throughout the world, how English became so popular and why people are learning it and why some people learn it and study it for years and they just never really pick up on it. On Thursdays, first thing in the morning, we have a Japanese conversation and Japanese reading and writing. The problem with this is that at my school in America, we had five levels of Japanese and me and the other American student who's here were both in the same Japanese three class. So we thought we were right in the middle but here there are only three classes, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And the intermediate class has a lot of the students, other international students that we've met who are really, we think really good at Japanese. So we were like, well, you know, we're not going to take the level two class because our Japanese isn't as good as theirs. So we started the level one class and there's only a few other students. Uh, one of them is a girl from France and she knows absolutely no Japanese, so this class is perfect for her. We were told that since it was such a small class that the teacher would cater to our different needs, but the first day she's teaching us konnichiwa, konbanwa, she's teaching us san, chan, kun, sama, and we're like, oh my god, are we actually going to learn something? We had a talk with the teacher and she's gonna try and adjust the levels a little bit. We also have a tourism English class. Reading this on the schedule, we're like, tourism English? Oh my gosh, why are we in an English class? This is weird. Actually just a class about tourism and it's taught in English. It's a huge class. And basically we get to pick a country and do all sorts of research on it and research their tourism industry and research tourism in general. It's kind of a class preparing you if you want a career in tourism. In February, we will also have an intensive tea ceremony class for four days. I'm going to continue this in another video that I'll upload in a couple days or so. I'm going to go over some of the experiences I've had, especially with the dormitory rules and just what it's been like for me living here and going to school so far.